What was that three chord progression you just did there again? Welcome back to Anderton's TV. Yes, do not adjust your sets. This is not that pedal show, although it's half of it. It's, it's half of it. I, <laughs> I, I thought, no, I'm going to have my gig rig hat on today, but I literally have my TPS hat on today. So, yeah, a little bit weird. Well, yes. Yeah, so, um, anyway, it's lovely to see Dan again. Um, Dan, if you're not aware, has uh, a two hats. He, he's uh, obviously... TPS has mm -hmm. become a, a, a you know something that we all watch on a regular basis with, with yourself and Mick, and we learn about posh pedals and amplifiers and good things like that. But of course, your background is as an engineer and as a designer um, with uh, switching solutions and other sort of pedal-related things, guitar-related things through the gig rig. Yeah. So I, I'll just I'm I'm not an engineer. Okay. I, I work with amazing engineers and I've got used to talking to engineers, which yeah. is a very specific skill to develop. But I've always, I, I got into electronics uh, back in the, in the 90s when I first had this idea and sort of hit my talent level. Right. And, but I, I love working with, with engineers and with, with people who are cleverer than I. Well, that's always, I think every entrepreneur would say, uh, yes, find lots of people cleverer than you and Indeed. work with them. Indeed. So. We're predominantly going to talk about the new iteration of the G3 um, switching solution today, but it's always great to see you and, and just chat about, you know, guitar, the guitar world. Yeah, you in too, man. General. It's like, uh, I, I kind of feel that uh, I'm sure most people who watch Anathan's probably w wouldn't be aware of this, but um, I wanted to say a massive thank you to you personally uh, for being such a champion of, of British homemade you know, music stuff. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's been, and all, you know, all, personally for me, you've been a, you've always been someone who I could call on the end of the phone. You've always been happy to have a chat about stuff. So, and it's been a, a massive help to me personally. So just you, I want you all to know <laughs> that this man walks the walk is, you know, oh, very, kind of you to say very, so. very uh, I, I, yeah. I, honestly though, getting to know you and obviously probably known Mick a little bit longer as well, but it's, I, I bet there is a ge genuine affection, I think, uh, uh, you know, with, you know, you, you and Mick as well. I, you know, seeing your success on that pedal show has oh, been uh, just joyous. Really. Well, you know what's it's amazing? Fantastic. And Mick and I talk about this all the time. So we have, you know, we have experience days. We have people actually come down, um, you know, once a month and we spend the day with guys and we get them to, you know, some guys have never plugged into a loud amp in their life. They just want to experience it. and and you know, have a play with all the gear. Being into this stuff is a lot to have in common with someone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Mick and I from very different, you know, music wise and backgrounds and stuff from you know, worlds apart. But this really is the, being into, being yeah. connected is the center of our friendship and it's, it's amazing. Um, so, yeah. Isn't that always, when, wherever you are in the world, you know, be on holiday somewhere, mm. you know, in another country or whatever, and someone will go, Are you that guy off of, you know, that pedal show or Anderson? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, and you're sort of thinking, half of me is just like, oh, God, I'm on holiday, you know, it's like, but but then, of course, you start talking about guitars. Yeah. And then you realise that 40 minutes has gone past and your wife is looking at you going, I'm looking after the children over here and you're supposed <laughs> to be helping. <laughs> and you're sort of, but yeah, it's just, it's, you can't help yourself, can no. you? It's just, and it, I think that's one of the best things, I think, when you meet, 
superstar artist that sure. you're thinking, oh my God, I've listened to this guy's music for my whole life, I'm so nervous. And then they go, have you heard that new pedal from such and such? And yeah. all of a sudden you're just on the, you're on this level of just like, yeah, I, I, what did you think? And it's, totally. Anyway, look. So, here's, oh, so just a quick extension to that. Yes. How do you explain to someone who's never been in a band and yes. never played with other musicians, how do you explain to them what that's like? Well, I mean, I... Because <sighs> I don't think you can. And when, you, when you're talking to people who are in bands yeah. and play music, it's like, there's a, there's a knowing there. It's like, it is the coolest thing in the world. You know, and unless you've experienced yeah. that, it's like, it's a really hard thing to... Yeah, you know, I, I'm I, still best friends with the guys I was in my first band with when I was right. a kid, you know. You share something with people when you, when, like, that you'll never share yeah. with anyone else. It's, it is a truly awesome I, thing. I'd love to know if there's like, um, what the correlation is between the size of the audience and the adrenaline rush that you get. Because, okay. you know, because I, I think probably the biggest audience I ever played to as a guitar player was probably 250 people. You know, like awesome. a, a decent sized club. Um, and, and the adrenaline rush is, was off the charts. Sure. You know, it's, it's actually, to be honest with you, a great rehearsal is a, is a, was a big rush. Absolutely. And then you just kind of like the live thing is like an, 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 another cherry on top of that. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't even know if it's possible to scientifically prove it, but you know, the, you, someone like Pete. Hanore will say, well, this is what it's like playing to 90,000 people. You know, it must be just... But I, I, I always thought when I was younger, it's like surely being Freddie Mercury mm. with 100,000 people in the palm of your hand or being, I don't know who, who it would be. Unfortunately, I can't think of any... There, there hasn't been an Englishman in my lifetime that's actually scored the winner in a World Cup final. But, you know, being <laughs> Jeff Hurst or something like that, it's got to be, those were the two things when I was a, sure. when I was a little boy, I was thinking, or even, not, even as a grown man, just going, I, I, that's got to be it, isn't it? Just big guitar solo to Wembley Stadium or score the winning goal in a World Cup final. That's it. It's like, yeah, yeah. aren't they the two? <laughs> just, you know. Anyway, look, we digress. So, and we will regularly, <laughs> I'm sure, during this. But let's just talk about this switching solution because many people would go... I can't get my head around why would I go and spend large amounts, large of, amounts of money on pedals veggies, yep. at, you know, and, and, and professional switching systems, stuff like that. Why wouldn't I just buy a Helix or a Quad Cortex or something like that? Because sure. surely that has solved the age old problem of going, how do I get you know, 10 different effects and be able to just press buttons and have different sounds? Sure. It's a question that I, you know, already, you know, already know the answer to, sure. but I imagine most people will be sitting out there going, yeah, I, I, you know, I've got, you know, I can have all of this with my um, multi-effects device of yeah. choice, yeah, yeah. you know. So what, what is the, the angle? Okay. Do you have a memorable experience when you're plugged into an overdrive pedal? Um, do I have a memorable experience? As in, can De you remember a specific overdrive pedal that you plugged into and went, oh, this is very special? I've definitely had, you know, the, the feedback thing and the note and you, you know, the ah, moment. Right. So, and I think for anyone who is into pedals, the beautiful thing about pedals is the f ability to fine tune what you like. So you think of these things as little tone modules and our tastes change and I can swap things in and out. Yeah. You know, as new things come along and I can try them. You know, a good example for me, this is an Otto Machines, BIM, which is their 12-bit digital delay. When I heard that, it was like, it does everything that I've ever wanted from a, just for a straight delay sound. I'll use the LVX to do a, a bunch of out there things, but for like a straight delay sound, let, let me give you an example. Yeah, let's okay, do it. So We're plugged in stereo plugged here, aren't stereo we? Stereo today. Um, so here is, this is just the amps. So I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to just to, just so that we can hear the delay itself. I've turned the reverb off. For, 
it's funny you you get so excited about that one thing and and it's a relatively simplistic i mean it's obviously a um sort of stereo delay triggering at slightly different points Pete and I did the new T, well, new, the, the tw- TC2290 yes. um, in a pedal yep. video recently. And it had some presets. Sure. And one of them was just a big, thick chorus sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, Pete played this, like, simple two-chord riff. And it was just straight out of the 80s, David Gilmore, yeah. Pink Floyd. And it's like... Now, why? And, and that's the thing, like, right? Wow! And, and it's and it's a delay. It it splits a signal, delays yeah. one side, mixes it back in. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like when I discovered this, so that's a a really simple, um, just a sort of stereo thing. Oh. And I've got that hooked onto an expression pedal. Yeah. So if you if you turn that down, so at the minimum value, it's very quiet. But it's always there. And the beautiful thing about, that I've connected with this, is like the, the modulation in it. Now that's just delay. Yeah. That a little bit of stereo reverb on that. So for me, I mean, it's taken years to find things that have really connected with me the way that these do. And then, you know, there's a whole MIDI aspect thing that I can put them on an expression pedal through this device and, you know, go to different sounds per preset. But the reason that uh, the switching thing, when I first was playing guitar, I didn't grow up with a dad who was into Led Zeppelin, Mm -hmm. right? I never had the cool albums at home. I was always into technology and I had one of the first Roland GP8s in Australia, right? <laughs> and because I, and I thought, this is state of the art. This is new technology. Yeah. Therefore, it has to be better than everything else that came before it, right? And then I was working with a producer and he said, um, I want you to try a couple of things. And he pulled out this old electric mistress. And I'm like, are you high? This is <laughs> from the 70s. I've got, look, in my rack. There's a little knob here that says flanger. And it says, just, you know, just try it. So I plugged it in and he had a deluxe reverb in the, in the control room turned up and I plugged the flanger in and I hit it. And I swear in those first, like it, my life changed because I couldn't wrap my head around how this old bit of technology yeah. that was made to a price point, you know, and if you've ever seen inside one of those things, they look like an Etch-a-Sketch gone wrong. <laughs> And it just had this magic about it. And, and what happened to me after that, or like I grabbed a credit card, I went down to Guitar Kuji at, at, and, uh, in, uh, in Sydney and blew a couple of grand on wow. pedals that people told me that I should try. And so, you know, I had um, grabbed a Tube Screamer that I sold because I'd never got on with a Tube Screamer, but uh, I had a bought a CE1 and an old um, Phase 90 and I'm plugging these modulation things in and it's like my mind was blown and I'm trying to match these things up with my racks of stuff and it was so far away Mm. but what happened was when I started chaining these things together I could notice this tone drop yeah you know so there's there's two things about uh, a switcher that you know any switcher will do this the ability to turn off one pedal and turn on another, yeah, right, with one, with one tap. Switch. So, yeah. at the moment, I've got under under here. I've got a, a little. Yeah, what is underneath it? So Ooh. underneath there, I don't know if the cameras can see that. Yeah, this one can. Yeah. over the top. So Hartman flanger. I've got the throwback overdrive boost and the uh, analog man sunface. So, what I can do, I can turn on the overdrive boost. And that's just a really nice um, uh, copy of the colour sound original Mm -hmm. overdrive boost. It just gives a little bit of, as opposed to the clean sound. A 
little bit of grunt. A little and then, tiny bit, yeah. And then I go straight to. So by pressing one button, I, it saved me having to turn one pedal off yeah. and go to another one. S still now, I think it's, a, it's still a fairly good analogy that, y you know, digital multi-effects mm -hmm. are um, your MP3s of the music world. Totally. And, and this is your vinyl. This of, is the live the, gig yeah. up the front. So, and you know, and, and the comparison is great between vinyl because it like, yes, it sounds fuller, fatter, more original, but absolutely, yes, it's a pain in the ass. You got yeah. to, you know, flip the record over halfway through the song and all, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, totally. So I think it's, you know, I think most people who have experienced the sort of rigs that you'd have on that pedal show would, would, would relate to that vinyl analogy. Sure. Um, and that's, you, you know, Dan and I talked extensively about is the argument about whether the audience can hear a difference or not even relevant at all? Yeah, I, and, and and you I, don't believe it no, is. No, I do think you? it's the most it's the most irrelevant question because it's when I'm on stage, the my enjoyment of what's going on has got not nothing to do with, but it's not about well if that guy is enjoying what I'm doing, then I'm having fun. I think it's a that's quite a symbiotic, isn't it? It's like you need to be having fun in order for that guy to have fun. If I'm, if and then I'm, when exactly. he's having fun, yeah, you're yeah. having more fun. So there's a... If I'm, if I'm connected and if I'm having a great time on stage yeah. and my performance is going to be better and then... Because that stuff, like, mm. you know, whether or not the audience can hear, you know, whether I'm using a, a Marshall or a, a mattress or an AC30, um, this guy doesn't care, nor is it relevant to mm. the guy at the front. What is relevant to this guy is... Am I having fun? Mm. And therefore, if I am having fun, that, that is what this guy's connecting mm. to. You know, when I go and see a, a great band and, you know, it's like I've seen Biffy Clyro probably as much as any other band I've ever seen. And they're always amazing. Mm. And then they'll have these gigs that are unforgettable. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's all precipitated by what, what they're feeling on stage, yeah. what's going on with them. Are, you know, do they feel connected? Is everything in a great place for them? And it is so tangible as, as an audience yeah. member at the front. A bit of a tangent there, but I, I thought it was, it's quite interesting to sort of move the, I mean, especially again, you, you have to move the audio argument away from yeah, YouTube totally. anyway, because everything you're hearing through YouTube ends up being compressed down to an MP3 sure. anyway. So sure. it's a bit like, no wonder people produce YouTube videos going, you can't hear the difference between this wood and that wood and, or this pedal and this pedal or this amp and this modeler. It's like, well, you have to be playing the guitar in the room that it's being recorded on to totally. have any chance of, of hearing that. But I, I, and as you rightly say then, so if the audience can't hear a difference, why does it matter? Well, of course, you know, the, the I, I, you speak to any guitar player that recollects any amazing experience, it will be, yeah, on the day I just had, it was like everything, everything was fell perfect. in the place. And, Abs and, yeah, it, of and course. as a result of that, my performance was elevated by X percent. And that's what the audience will hear. They'll hear sure. the elevated performance rather than necessarily any one element of the tone. I sometimes think if you could speak to a professional racing driver and when the car is just perfectly balanced and yeah. they're not even really sure why it was perfectly balanced in one race and then not in the next race because you know they're trying to sit but like and then it gives that driver the confidence to take the corner at one mile an hour faster than he would normally do it sure so he wins the race sure. absolutely it's like where's what do you you know you're not there's no single element that you can go oh yeah i could see he'd set the suspension differently it's like just everything it just comes together and maybe nothing yeah you know maybe you know who knows yeah. but something in the air elevated that performance and i think you know it, it's also a matter of what's going on it's a big matter of what's going on in their heads as well because yeah. you can have the best car in the world and the best yeah. driver in the world but if he isn't in the zone that day yeah. then it's not going to happen I, th I think like for me um what i've discovered is when I, you know, like a, a, I'm a big fan of the, the of the Kingsley pedals. Yeah. They their valve overdrive pedals. And he came. He was in again over the in the about I don't know, 
two or three months ago, was he in with his wife? He, yeah. I mean, he must have come to see you as well. And, yeah. But he's such a sweet guy. Amazing. Every it's... time I go, please make some extra pillows so Andersons can sell them, please. And he's just like, I so wish I could leave, but I just don't want to. So it's like, okay. <laughs> so you have to buy these direct from, from uh, the Kingsley website. Yeah. Never mind. But, uh, but... One day. <laughs> he is such a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah. Like, you know, astonishing. And there's every now and then I, 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 there's, a, there's a pedal I'll plug into. It's like someone who's a, an amazing guitar player has yeah. had a lot to do with this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's not like he's, he's grabbed it and plugged it into a PA and gone, yeah, that'll do. He sat down and agonised over every capacity yeah. value and just because he's got a certain touch and... And I love that. All the, all the pedals I've got in here, there's a story behind them as yeah. well. Yeah. But when it comes to, say, you know, an overdrive or whatever, like this, I don't have any more questions about this. Right. I'm not going into a menu going, oh, would it, this be a little bit better if I change the EQ curve and pushed it up here? It might be. It might not be. But when I plug into that, it's like, okay, that's yeah. that sound. There's no more questions about that. Moving on. So... Anything that makes you play, anything that draws anything out of you. I, I often equate it to there are moments on the, you know, on the show we've got the amps nice and, and a level and everything's connected and stuff just starts to fall out. Yeah. Stuff that you haven't practiced starts to come out and you get led in a certain direction. For me, that's what pedals do. Yeah. They lead you in a certain direction. Um, and, yeah, that's what... When I first had the idea for the switcher back in, the first one came out in 2004, so it's our 20 year anniversary next wow. year. Wow. Um, Is this the one that you took to the show at Olympia or whatever it was in, in London and uh, yeah, didn't exactly uh, that. came back with some fairly <laughs> underwhelming orders so, for it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, again, no tangent, but the first show we did uh, in, in 2004, um, Guitarist Magazine used to put on the, the guitar, London Guitar yeah. Show at, at Olympia. Yeah. And that's where I first met Mick because he was the okay. editor of, yep. of, it was Guitar Buyer. So he was the editor of Guitar Buyer. Yeah. And they said, oh, this is, you know, it's an amazing bit of kit. You should come down and, and display it. I'd never done a, a trade show before in my life. I turned up and there was a table and nothing else. So we were running around stealing bits and pieces just to try and, you know, have a, uh, something that we could show. And I worked out the first switcher that we had, I said, okay, if I sell 300 of these, it's enough to quit my job. And that show was over a long weekend. Yeah. And from the moment that the doors opened, or before with the doors opened, Richie Cotson walked by and he goes, oh, that's amazing. I thought, oh, cool. And from the moment the doors opened, we were always at least three people deep. And, you know, and it sounded great. It was, there was, yeah. there were, people were so interested in it. And I'm like, this is <laughs> awesome. And at the end of that long weekend, he tallied up all the numbers and we had sold exactly one unit and he asked yeah. for his money back oh, on no. the Monday. No! So, because what it was, people hadn't seen anything like it before. Yeah. It was an expensive thing that didn't make any sound. Yeah. Um, but I think it was not long after that, uh, I got a phone call from Rob Harris from Jamiroquai. Yeah. Um, our very first order actually was, uh, who's now become my guitar teacher, a very dear friend of mine, a guy called Mark Johns, yeah. who was Ray Davis's guitar player for a long time. And so a lot of the people in that world saw it and thought, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. This is like a, it could do the job of a very expensive... Um, yeah, like a, are we allowed to say the... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah Pete, like like Pete a, Cornish and Bob Bradshaw and all yeah. these things. They were building these incredible systems, you know, and, and they're amazing. And what I wanted to be able to do was have, it's a similar concept. I'll, t I'll just take you through a couple of things because there's, there's one thing that we, we had in our very first ever switcher. Because I was really into vintage pedals, mm -hmm. right? And one thing, so the electric mistress was a really good example. Yeah. One thing that the mistress did when you turned it on, it sounded great. But the level dropped. Yeah. And it dropped just enough to bring you out of the mix. Right. Right? So we had uh, built in gain stages. Right. In so uh, you gain stages that would happen. That exactly. Yeah. A gain stage that would happen before at the input and a gain stage that would happen after the input. Now you can turn this on and off, so it's completely true bypass if they're not there. So the guitar is basically plugged directly into the amplifier. But like for example, if I I go back to 
um, this sound here. We're a bit out of tune. We're a bit out of tune. Let me, <laughs> let me, yeah, let me sort Oh yes, out. let's demonstrate the tune <laughs> feature. Um, which Actually, obviously has never been on a G3 before, has no, it? So no, because you've well, never had the big display, the, have you? The G3, uh, we, the tuner came out, we did an up update. Right. So people with tuners, uh, people with G3s could get the tuner. Perfect. So, <laughs> what would happen is, if I had uh, a sound, and I plugged the, the flanger on, so this actually isn't a good example because the flanger I've got automatically does that. Yeah. But what would happen is the signal would drop. Yeah. So then what we did was we invented these little um, pre-gain and post-gain circuits so that I could then turn that on, either turn it down. And are these dedicated for each loop? So or is it is it one master sort of in and out? They're thing? dedicated on each preset, so each you can preset, set the right. you can set the the level of, of pre gain going in or, or yeah. the post gain going out, and you can balance them up. You can control them on an expression pedal, so it does the job of a volume pedal. Um, and that was that was really important to me because I needed a way when I started getting into vintage effects. It's like these sound incredible, yeah. but there's no point in having them if I turn on a thing and they drop out. It, so I really want to do like a, just a, a 30 second, just like, so if we imagine the evolution of yep. guitar playing, 70s and 80s guitar players start to put much more complex rigs together in terms sure. of pedals and effects and rack units and, uh, and amps, but there's no way to switch them simply. So, sure. so guys like Bob Bradshaw and Pete Cornish all of a sudden become uh, big names in the yeah. music industry. Indispensable. But you're yeah. talking six-figure buy-ins to put one of their sort of switching systems together. And so the only guys doing it were the ones touring, making millions of dollars off the backs of the tour. Yeah. Fine. Then, of course, you've had this explosion of um, multi-fix yep. products, you know, and you can get in there at the £99 end mm -hmm. and you can go in at the, the Neural and the Axe effects and the sort of Kemper end, you know, so you can spend anything up to a couple of thousand pounds and you can buy a device that's kind of gone, here's your Bob Bradshaw sure. thing in a, uh, in a relatively affordable small single box. Um, and I suppose then, but you're then into the detail of going, but I still like pedals better. So what I want is my Bob Bradshaw rig, but for a thousand pounds, not sure. hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. yeah. And I suppose, you know, hopefully that was roughly 30 seconds because that's kind of where this is. So as you as the guitar player, you know, you're very much at a point where you can choose the direction you can go if, if the multi-effects modeling thing uh, meets all of your needs sure. and, sat and that's what you want. You can go that way. If pedals and amps is your thing, but you need to be able to switch them, then this, and it's kind of great really. So it's just like brilliant. So it's everybody's catered for here with something yeah. that's massively more affordable than it was sure. 30 years ago. Sure. Um, but I want to, this is, I suppose what we really need to talk about though now is how is the S different to the, because that, okay. that's what the launch is, right? So so you, you mentioned you brought this original iteration of this out 20 years ago. Yep. The, the basic concept of it hasn't really changed in terms of what it's trying to do yeah, for sure. the guitar player. Yeah. But how has the, the S and then there's the Atom version, which is the more compact version, mm -hmm. um, changed? And again, we should also mention that for guitar players like me, I use Dan's um, Quartermaster switching solution, which is a, a, a non-programmable way, a simpler non-programmable way of effectively still switching in and out multiple pedals, yeah, yeah, which exactly. I think is superb. And anyone with five or more pedals yeah. should really, really look at investing in, in something like a Quartermaster because it just is brilliant. But so focus now on what okay. does the S do so, that the previous one didn't do? The, so the only difference between G3S and G3 is that we have these little OLED screens next to the foot switches. So that now, because what I can, there's 99 banks in here, mm -hmm. right? So now when I bank up, let's say, you know, bank one's a song and I go to the next bank, then it changes 
Yeah. You know, you, I can so I can label them up. There's a uh, and a web editor where I can go on now and change. You know, type all the names mm-hmm. in. And it just names appear on the screen, and then you know do all the MIDI stuff as well in the web editor. So phase one of that's out. So in, is it? Is it, sorry, Dan, but is it, right. is it fair to say that really on the previous version of these? Once you're past bank one, because you've probably you've manually your written your little there. tape, you're basically once you're past bank one, you're basically you're screwed because you'll never remember what how bank two and it's three re- and four is different. It's a challenge. So what, yeah. I mean, what you could do. I remember when I did the 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 rig for the latest uh, Roxy Music tour. Mm. I, I did um, Phil Manzanera's rig, and we would put you know verse, chorus, solo, mm-hmm. solo, you know, yeah. middle eight on all the banks and then as they went through the songs then that right. would work. I so see. there's yeah. there was, yeah. was there are ways to make that work. Yeah. And if you're only if you've only using two or three banks, that's not a lot to get your head around. But if what you're doing is dedicating a bank per song, yeah. then it's or, it's yeah. really it gets really tricky. Um, or per project or exactly. band or anything. You can you have, know, it's like, yeah, just yeah, it's like I'm going to have you know, 30 songs that. for this band and 30 songs for that band. And then, yeah, it it does get tricky. Yeah. So the screens, I mean, it's such an obvious yeah. thing to do. But, it, you know, thanks to the pandemic and stuff, like getting components has just been so hard. They all, you know, everything sort of finally arrived and then... Yeah, so so these come out. So that's the that's the big difference is is the screens, um, you know. And as you go up, I've got nothing on there, and then you can just see exactly where you're Cause, going. Because your switches are not just designed to switch in and out um, pedals, are they? I mean, they'll do MIDI command yeah, changes. Yeah. They'll do amp channel changes. Yep. Uh, they'll. Well, I suppose they'll trigger anything that will basically work off of some sort of, you know, instruction from a, from a switcher. Yeah. So to to not, yeah, you, you're really limit you're you're really limiting yourself to almost just one bank of application, aren't you? Sure. Before you start to go, I just can't remember what all this does. Yeah. And if you're doing a show, I want that show to be as slick as possible. Mm. You know, with a certain amount of flexibility. So the the little yellow dots here. Are, presets that we call in stomp box mode. So I can add, you know, if I'm on a on here, which is just that that OD, I can add delay and reverb, add a compressor, add a bit of harmonic. And then I go back to that sound and I can I can say, okay, when I go back to a core sound here, I want certain ones to turn off, certain ones to stay on. Um, so having that sort of flexibility to have, you know, core tones and that, but I, you know, it's like, oh, I want a bit more grunge with this one, you know, the flexibility to add certain sounds on top of other sounds. Um, you know, all, all of our switches yeah. have always been, been able to do that. Where did your where did your idea for I, I don't even know if this caught on whether you still make it or not, uh, but of course one of the things you can do with a with a programmable multi effects is have you know your each pedal recalling a different setting of that sure. pedal for every sure. patch if you want to which of course the way you've got this set up you're you, you're using the same setting apart from this one obviously which can do that I guess, mm-hmm. um, but you designed something that would ha- where you could attach to the knobs didn't you <laughs> that would actually do the most and I and yeah. I saw at the time I thought wow that's amazing and then I kind of just don't know that I've seen it anywhere no. for the, so did it was that just like it didn't really so we designed didn't catch it on no we designed it it worked really well product support mm-hmm. would have killed us because it had to what you had to do was take the knobs off undo the part of the pedal, slide the thing right. under, put the gears on, and it's like... So you you could, if you were building the board for someone, you could manage that, but if you were leaving it to someone to just build themselves, yeah, the chances it, are they'd do it wrong. And it's then it's, it's not just that, but it's like <laughs> if... Yeah, there's just too much to go wrong with it, you know? And we were a really small team, Yeah, and it's like... It's, but wouldn't that be, I mean, essentially, I guess it's there's really controlling some, all your analog pedals. Yeah, it's I mean, really there's great. something about changing the presets on the, um, these chase bliss. Oh, yeah, by, it's, and it's, you see the sliders move and there's something just ridiculous inside you that goes, oh, I love that. You know, it's just like, I mean, wonderful. in reality, this 
and this yes. are doing exactly the, the same, same thing via MIDI internally. You just can't yeah, see yeah. it. So it's just, I don't know, there's something. But yeah, I almost want my whole, you know, I just love the idea of mechanically seeing everything change. When but. we designed, uh, started designing G3, going from G2 yeah. to G3, that was a part of it. That yeah. was going to be the system that you could, but it just got, yeah. it got so complicated. I can imagine. But I do love that. But saying that, there is so much that you can do with pedals set up the way they are. Mm. So, for example, um, this is the Diamond Vibrato, yeah. okay? It's my favorite vibrato pedal ever. I've put it on loads of people's boards, introduced Stephen Wilson to it, and he, he just, it's his favorite pedal ever. And when you hear it, what it does is, it's just this thing where it just gives you movement. I mean, it's really, it's really seasick yeah. and stuff. Okay, yeah. well, what happens if I send that to just one amplifier? You've just demonstrated the difference between chorus and vibrato there. Exactly. Immediately. Exactly. And that's freaked me out because I've said it like 20 times in a demo, this is the difference. But I've never, I've, it's always been switching between a vibrato and a chorus effect on the pedal. So oh. I'm just basically reading out from the manual, you know, what you're hearing is one is 100% of the signal is wet and the other is half the signal is wet and half. So, but the, to see it demoed like that, that's quite a cool moment. It's that amazing. Is. So it's a chorus and a vibrato pedal by just decide in a stereo rig, by just it's, deciding yeah. which. So I can, I can take, tanky. I can take the pedals and I can say, okay, I, I, this is the order I want the pedals to go in. Yeah. And this is the amp that I want this pedal to go in. Yeah. So now when you hear that with a bit of delay and reverb on it. I, I mean, again, it's all about each individual just finding their the, the equipment that's going to do what yeah, they want to do. Totally. So I, I, we've, I, you know, I really feel just like, you know, there is no bashing of if you your choice is to go down one path sure. rather than another. It's like yeah, yeah, if yeah. it's working for you and you're playing guitar and you're getting enjoyment from it, then brilliant. But it is interesting. I think I think some people do get obsessed with multi effects units of going. You know, my first ten patches are 57, 57 different drive pedals because I've got to get the drive pedal to be just right for this Mark Knopfler sound and then sure. this other thing just right for this Eric Clapton sound, just right for this U2 or whatever. And then you get a guitar player like Pete who's just like, I've got two drive pedals and a compressor pedal and a delay pedal yeah, with yeah, tap I've, tempo on yeah. it. And, I, I mean, and I'll just play all those songs and they'll all sound correct. Exactly. You know, and it's yeah. like, so, so I don't know, I think it is a mindset and I think sometimes it's just you know, if you focus more on playing the part right and understanding how it was played. Yeah, sure. Then actually you can do a lot with like four pedals, can't you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, so one of the things that I've, I, I love doing is not just experimenting with, you know, having different pedals on different sides, but uh, pedal order, mm. getting the order right. Um, so like, for example, um, if I go, let's go in here, and if I stick the flanger on in here, so this is a, let's, let's say this is a, just a. These are your loops, right? This, I guess, yeah, yeah. So, so you've got 12 are, loops. Exactly. You can see which ones are engaged. Exactly. So yeah. this is just a, a, hopefully this isn't too loud. So now if I put the flanger on, this flange is going to be in front, right? Right yep. in front. Yeah. Okay, that's great. But what happens if I want to put the flanger after yeah. the overdrives, but only for, on one side of the amp? Yeah. So th this is where you're into the realms of, I can't do this with my quartermaster. Can yeah. I? I'm just, you know, I, this just, is, this I is... have to choose whereabouts in the chain it is, and then I can turn it on and off, or I can toggle it between that and another pedal or whatever. But it's, I can't, I can't decide in a stereo mix 
which amp it comes out of or whether it goes before or after the drive. That's or right. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So this is this is for your, you know, just like your next level up of, of uh, requirements. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So I can do things like. You hear the flanger in that amp? No flanger no in that flanger amp. No flanger in that amp. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's stick harmonic tremolo in one amp and flanger in the other amp. to say I have not experimented with different modulation on either side of a, of a stereo rig and I wouldn't have I'm not even entirely sure I would have thought to have done that but yeah. it's a very epic stereo sound isn't it's it just mega it's just mega so the, you know once you've found the things that you connect with actually being able to control the order being able mm. to control where they go as far as you know which amp um, you know, Mick and I do bang on a lot about the wet dry thing, which is what yeah. we experience with mm -hmm. that uh, chorus thing, sending yeah. the vibrato to one amp and not to the other. Yeah. And I just find those sounds so inspirational. Um, yeah, so I, between being able to control levels and mm. order and all that sort of stuff, um, I can get everything I could possibly want with a few, I say a few, there's lots here because this is my, the big board, yeah. but pedals that that I love and feel connected with, I can just get so much out of them. Yeah. We, we, we're using two amplifiers. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, you know, you do mess around periodically with this idea of the, the dry one in the middle and yep. then the stereo either side of it. Yeah. How, how does the, can the G3 run a, 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 a wet, dry, wet? It can. Rig? So I've got, I've got a underneath here. So there's two outputs in here. Mm -hmm. I've also got uh, a humdinger in here, mm -hmm. put in a, a loop in here. So what I can do, that's my third output. Right. So that you're essentially using a loop as a third output. Exactly. Then, yeah. But I can. But then I can choose where that amp sits oh, in relation right, to everything else, um, and I can. <laughs> so we did it. We did a. We did a show which was we called Epic Delay Tones. And Mix got this new Two Rock TS1, and we had that in the middle, yeah. using the preamp out, and then stereo stuff left and right, and it sent me into an existential crisis. Because <laughs> the problem is, once you've heard, once you've experienced playing a rig like that, you can't go back. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, because this is like two amps for me now is minimum. Bare right, minimum, right? Because it's like a plug into, I mean, you know, a, a, you know, plugging into one amp is still great. But when you when you do that wet dry thing, it's like, oh, it's so good. But now I've done the three amp thing. I'm trying to work out a rig that isn't crazy. So like impractical, isn't it? Pete's in there laughing his head off. Because um, yeah, it's it's cr it's stupid, but it's man, it's so much fun. Um, <laughs> it's amazing to see that enthusiasm that comes out from you know and it's shared enthusiasm and sure. we can hear pete in the room and it's like and i sort of feel like i don't want these videos to come across as like a, a bit of a bashing of the sort of you know digital absolutely kind of thing. Uh, look, um, anything that gets you playing guitar yeah. if if you're in a th there's a time and a place if you're in a uh you know a, a function band and I mean, I've been in function bands before where we've had to turn the amps off mm -hmm. with electric guitars and play like that, <laughs> right? Seriously. <laughs> and at that point, my matchless is just sat there that yeah, like, turned the off. Mm -hmm. It looks good. But, you know, like when Mick and I go and do TPS gigs, yeah. they're our gigs. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll turn up with, we did a, the last bunch of gigs we did with Andy Timmons. Yeah. So there were six guitar amps on stage. Yeah. And you know what was amazing though? The sound guys for those gigs that we had 
when they when they saw the actual stage to start with, they're like, oh god. By the end of the gig, we had one sound guy was came up to Andy and was hugging him, saying that was pure emotion. And yeah. he was, and then after that, after they've heard it and felt it, and then you know all the TPS people yeah. in the room, it's like. Then it's like, oh, this makes mm. complete sense. It doesn't make sense if you're down the dog. Well, I guess. Well, you say that. Sense. So this is, I think, where actually this whole sound man thing. I think guitarists could help themselves a lot. I, I was guilty when I was gigging of having my amp on stage behind me on the floor, mm. standing two feet in front of it, and constantly going, I, I still, I'm not, I can't hear myself. Turn it up, turn it to the point where I'm sure the sound man's going. You can't hear yourself so, because you're stood here yeah. and your amp's here. All of us out yeah. here are now hearing your amp five times louder than it needs to be, and nobody needs to hear that. You know, so I, I think to a certain extent, your six guitar players on stage, yeah. I'm guessing we're all very experienced. Because three, that's two, two guitars right. each. Okay, so Me but it's Andy. like everybody knows how to set the amp up on yeah. stage, respect yeah. the and band And how to mix. keep out of the way of yeah. each other. And so absolutely. I, I think to an extent, there's probably a lot of that sound man, guitar player, sort of perceived friction and tension yeah. is, is, is sort of, you know, self-inflicted. Totally. Um, Look, t- tell us the story about the, what was on the, the, the Biffy Clyro rider you just said at a festival. Oh, man, that, I think that's, was, that was brilliant. That's what so, you need to do, I think, yeah, when yeah. you get to the size of Biffy Clyro. So it, it, so it was actually, uh, so we had Mike Van Art on, on TPS, who's um, just a beautiful human, astonishing guitar player. And Mike Van Ut is the other guitar player in Biffy. But Mike and Simon Neal started another band called Empire State Bastard. Right. Right? <laughs> and it's super heavy. <laughs> Mike says, oh, you know, you should you come along. To, we're playing this festival. And the same guys that run 2000 Trees, uh, I forget the name of the festival. But anyway, my son and I went because um, my son's a, a massive Biffy fan and and they played and you know you've got a cranked orange and a cranked like Mike's got a uh, oh, what's the name of his amplifier anyway 200 watt amplifiers cranked on stage and it's loud and absolutely glorious and at that point you're no longer listening to the music you're yeah. just there experiencing it with everyone else around you experiencing the same thing. So it becomes this communal thing. But what was awesome, uh, they had Russian circles were playing after them and they were immense. And then we started going around to all these tents and these bands were just just fantastic. And the sound guy says, so I just wanted to show you this because I, I know you're, you're a fan of, you know, guitars turned up. And on the rider, all the bands, you know, notes to the sound guy saying, we are a loud band. <laughs> Do not tell us to turn down. The loud amps are a part of our sound. And there was like all the, like the bands are basically all saying the same thing. Don't tell us to turn down because this is what we do. And it's it the was, revolution. It was, it's the fight come back. On, come on. Come on, people. Pitchforks and everything. <laughs> what was so beautiful is that in like in that scenario, it was completely appropriate. Yeah. The the people that were there, that the experience they had, I imagine it was like, you know, in the in the in the early days of seventies hard rock and metal, and yeah. you know, going to see a Sabbath gig, and Motorhead. just being <laughs> just being pinned to the wall, and you were just experiencing this thing with a, with a group of people, and no wonder it brought a community together around yeah. that music, you know, it's one thing to sit there and go, oh yeah, I just I, I think the the modulation, the square wave and the modulation doesn't really work. We need to go more of a sawtooth thing. It's like, dude, yeah, it's not turn that, the amp it? up. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and it, was so, it was so beautiful to see. It was so great. And I, I, I came out of that experience so inspired. And, you know, when we had Mike in the show, you know, it's like, well, this is how the amps are set. And he just cranked them up. And, you know, room small than this. And Mick and I were there just going, yes, it was so good. Ah. Uh. This is great. This seems like the longest possible way ever of telling you that G3 has now got basically screens. little screens on it. But that is essentially what we were here to do. Can I see the Atom? Of course. Uh, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I sort of feel like we'll just show this. If you're interested in 
um, simpler uh, switching solutions, then yeah, go look at uh, oh, the Quartermaster. I mean, Dan, you're, you're always very, um, what's the right word? Non-defensive. Oh, this is a board. I was about to try and pull the... So, the, okay, this is not... So this is... Okay, so you've got this... This is my... Oh, I see. So, Joe, who works for us, this is his board. And... Uh, Joe's oh, it's a quite a lot more compact, isn't it? Oh, the yeah, Atom? yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the... Is it just less loops rather than less functionality? So, there are six loops on here. Yeah. But they're all stereo loops. They're all TRS stereo. Okay. Um, and all the same functionality. Um, we had a few people ask us about... So obviously we've got the screens on the left-hand side of these foot switches, mm -hmm. but on the far left, you've, the preset names for these actually appear on the big screen. I see, yeah. So... so it saves a bit of, of space, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's Atom. Yep. Again, if, you, if you're sort of thinking to yourself, I quite like this idea of going down this switching route. Uh, sorry, the, so the question I was about to ask, you've all, I think you've always been um, quite gracious about um, other brands that have got into the switching space and sure. perhaps have uh, tried to emulate some of the uh, products that you've designed mm -hmm. but bring them out at a cheaper price point. Sure. And I think you've always sort of gone, look, there'll always be someone that wants the best one and there'll always be someone that wants a cheaper version of that. And you're quite comfortable with this idea that Gig Rig sits as this sort of superior... Well, I... I can't comment on any other brand. All I know is what goes in mm -hmm. to making these. So I've struggled with transformers for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So there's two outputs here, right? Unless one of those outputs is isolated, um, you're going to get earth loops. Mm -hmm. So as you hear, the amps are turned up, there's no earth loops. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the second output is isolated. Now, traditionally, you would do that with an audio transformer. And that's what we've done for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Works great. But it's the transformer has a coil like a pickup. And because of that, it has characteristics like a different pickup would. <laughs> Which is why, you know, say guys like, you know, brands like Neve and stuff, they go to great lengths to say these are the specific transformers that we use to get this sound. Yeah. And one thing I've always struggled with with transformers uh, in in our world was that as good as they could be, they always had a character, and I don't want that. Right. I want what comes out of output one and output two. So I've been working on something for years. There's no audio transformers in here. Okay. Basically, long story short, it basically balances the signal, and then goes through a, some circuitry so that you can remove the ground. If you imagine your guitar lead, you've got center and you've got ground, and your guitar signal moves like this. If you just remove the ground, then you've got no reference point, and, and that signal can float and can cause real issues. You've got to have a reference point for it. So we've done it through... Uh, it's basically like a balancing technology, but it balances over a space of millimeters and gives you the option then to remove it. So what happens now on output two is a complete, perfect rep like representation mm -hmm. of what's happening on output one. And it goes from the, your square wave down to like five hertz up to 100K. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, and I, that took years to develop. So I know the, the energy and effort. And it's just because I, selfishly, yeah. when I'm playing <laughs> through this stuff, I just, I want it to be, perfect and I I want people to have the best experience with our gear so you know but I do believe a rising tide lifts all boats so I think you know when people have you know when this came out in 2004 the first one yeah and then you know you see other people going oh that's a good idea I can do I can do a version it's like yeah that it, it's I see it as sort of a it validates it, yeah it? yeah absolutely yeah um and it's like everyone in this. Every, they're all great. They're all great people, you know. So brilliant. Let's um. I th let's I, honestly, you're too modest, Dan. <laughs> I, I, yes, I think in a nutshell, there are cheaper versions of uh, the gig rig switches out there, uh, but none of the professional people are using them. They're all using gig rigs. So <laughs> no, there you go. No, that's, there are, there that's... are look, there, there are there are professional people <laughs> using it, and it's great. I think um, 
as far as I, I want people to play the stuff that inspires mm. them. And, you know, if you pl plug into something and you, whatever helps you feel connected, mm. for me, I might be a big sado, but yeah. I feel connected yeah, yeah. with this. And just whatever that takes, mm. you know. Well, there, there's a, there's a, a relativity to this as well, isn't there? You haven't got a 1200 pound switcher on a board with 400 quid worth of pedals. No. You, you've got at least five grand's worth of pedals here. Yeah. So actually, you know, as I said, that's what I mean about the relativity. This, you know, I haven't like, gone out and spent five grand. This is, this, is, this is 20 years worth of trying stuff out. I like that. No, I didn't like that. I got rid of yeah. that, got something else. And this is this is What's the oldest man pedal now? on here? I mean, not, you know, as in the pedal that's been on here the longest. I think, oh, let's see. Probably the Analog Man's Sunface. Right. Um, you know, that's that's a fuzz fuzz face, yeah. but I just cannot get away from it. It just I just love it. The Hartman flanger I've had for a long time, but I, I go backwards and forwards between flanges. Um, and what's the pedal that most flip flops between something and another? Probably the compressor. Right. Um, I I love that. I also uh, I really love the uh, Empress. Um, Mark yeah. II compressor, yeah. it's astonishing. Um, but I lent that to a guy that works for me and I'm never getting that back. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, this is the beautiful thing about pedals is I can change these. Yeah. If I'm like, I'm really not feeling that today, uh, I will change drive pedals out. Uh, but I, you know, I keep coming back to the page, but the Harlot uh, as a higher gain thing, I've, I feel like I've finally latched onto something, but I could change that for an eternity, uh, for, you know, a, a number of different high gain things that have a yeah. characteristic. It just, you know, but that for me, the modular nation, the, the modular um, uh, characteristic of being able to s swap things in and out is, I just love it. Awesome. Well, it's always a pleasure. Oh, dude, you, you know, too, man. Thank uh, you so much. This is, uh, you can buy this from Andersons or direct from the gig rig. Um, did, did you have other retailers around the world, or is, is we it, have very few? It is very we few. We had isn't so we it? used to have a lot. The we only use retailers now that we a trust, but b oh, that cuts it down a bit, doesn't it? it, it, it <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. But the other thing is customer support is yeah. is everything for us. Yeah. So we we only use retailers that I know look after the customers and. Uh, that you, that has really whittled it down. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I no, shouldn't laugh. No, well, here's an interesting story, and, and you know we can finish on this because I know this has been a long one. But you, I remember talking to you, man, years and years ago, and because these things, these are all made in the UK, mm -hmm. you know, um, designed and made in the UK at Royal Wooden Bassett. And these are really expensive to make. Like we're not operating on, on huge margins. And you, when I first met you, you said, I oh, really, can, can we start stocking gig rig? And I said, look at this, we just don't have the margins to do it. Yeah. And that, and it wasn't like you said, oh, okay, well, stuff you then. We, it was like, it was two years, maybe three years after that first conversation that we had, where eventually we worked out mm. that, Andertons could start stocking gig rig stuff. And I was, I've never had that with another retailer. You know? I, I, so that was, yeah. that's what I, I was saying before about you championing yeah, and I, the I British think, manufacturing. I suppose, yeah, I, if I'm, part of that conversation is, oh, we're going to get, this. nobody's watching by now anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are, there are some retailers out there who are margin obsessed. Sure. And I think my view has always been you know, you want to you want to be able to sell and represent the products that a customer wants. Sure. This is why he would love if we could do something on the Kings stuff or whatever. It's why it's always a little bit heartbreaking when Chase Bliss make the decision to go direct and I understand commercially why they do it. Right. But I think yeah, as a retailer, you've got to you've got to you've, you've got to be sympathetic to this. Like you know, I know that in order for the price on the Andertons website to be the same as the price on the Gig Rig website, you're making less. Sure. When we sell it than when you sell it. Sure. 
But I think it's about going, having a constructive conversation that sort of says, well, so, but how could we do this? Like, how can I help you? Sure. It, there's no benefit to you of a retailer selling your products and it just being, well, you sell 10 less, they sell 10. It's a, sure. There's only a benefit if somehow that retailer exposes the brand to more people, sells yeah, yeah. more product. And that was, I think that was the conversation that we had, which was just, look, let's try it. Let us just give yeah. us a little bit. Yeah. And if we can't goes. grow your business to a point where it's worth it, yeah. then what, we'll step back and, and I just think and it's- And that's also testament to what you and Pete have done. Um, and obviously, you know, Mick and I always, uh, you know, give massive credit to you and Chappers. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, Pete, you know, to be able to go to a, a retailer. And I'm always, you know, sometimes that when you, when you listen to stuff, because you've always had a really good ear. Mm. And you're very qu quick to go, yeah, I like that. I'm not feeling that, mm. you know, which is really interesting to watch knowing that you're a retailer. Mm. It's like, no, it's not all about the cash grab. It's about making sure that the people who are watching, you're setting them up for the best experience. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really well, great. I think what, you, what you've done and, and Pete have done with this channel is extraordinary. That's very kind of you. I always feel as well when we're doing sort of honorary shout outs to people who sort of forged the way, um, Andy at Pro Guitar Shop. Absolutely. Is, he's like the godfather of all of it. Yeah, uh, Phil X. Yeah, Phil, um, absolutely, Fred with Fred Americana, Americana for amazing. sure. Amazing. Yeah, and then um, they, they, were some, they were some pioneering demos. Oh. What do you do when your main YouTube guy uh, gets the Bon Jovi gig? You just have to sort of go, <laughs> bugger. It's like, probably, you know, you got to let him go, right? But Yeah, uh, next. yeah is it? And you got, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, that's it. That's it. That's his uh, Pete yeah, and Gun. blunt if I'm lucky. <laughs> would be a good gig he's still playing a big crowds anyway man thank you bud. it's always a pleasure yeah mate um, yeah you too guys links will be below uh if you can't buy this from anderton's then i'm sure gig rig have international shipping stuff and they'll show you the other dealers in the other countries as well but yes a whole plethora of amazing you know pedal board type products from dan and, and the gig rig guys so go check them out thank you bud thanks for watching see you in another video soon bye Press anything, see what happens.